hi, this is a dedication I want to give uh, to my father and to the uh, brave servicemen of the United Kingdom Armed Forces um, who have to go through some very unpleasant experiences. Um, my father fought in a few campaigns. He fought in the Suez incident uh, against the Egyptians and he also fought in one of the longest wars that the British Armed Forces have fought in centuries. That war was the Cold War uh, where Europe was divided by an Iron Curtain and two ideologies looked at each other what is primarily capitalism in the West and uh, communism in the East each would develop in the power to totally annihilate the other opponent and neither of them wanting to actually um, find out but both of them so scared of the opponent that they went on a mass production of arms many of these arms are still in existence but during the 1950s uh, the part my father played was that he headed up a crash party of soldiers who were 15 miles from the biggest hydrogen bomb the British Army dropped, so the British government had dropped on Christmas Island during that period. Probably the biggest hydrogen bomb ever exploded in the Earth atmosphere ever, um, unless the Americans haven't told us everything, <coughs> or the Russians have kept something very secret. Uh, he was um, described the experience as being dressed up like a loving glove. Um, everyone obviously had their uniforms, they had overcoats, etc. Um, they had a uh, special radiation suit. They had very heavy material hoods which went over their heads. They were given visors, glasses, very thick, darkened goggles. And of course, they had their normal gloves plus oven gloves. This is all in the uh, tropical country as well, so tropical islands. So it's obviously they're sweltering hot and they're dressed up like oven gloves as well. Uh, they also were ordered to lie face down, and um, <clears throat> they were behind a mound of 18 inches of earth. Um, every British soldier knows that. 18 inches of earth will protect a person from a nuclear blast. Certainly at 15 miles away, uh, that is true. Uh, 18 inches of earth will deflect a nuclear bar blast. Uh, because that's what he found. They basically had to lay with their feet towards the bomb and they be face down and they'd be facing away from the bomb. Um, with their elbows on the ground in front of them and their hands over their eyes. My father says that when the bomb went off, the light was so bright that even through all these visors and the hood and the gloves and the oven gloves, uh, he could still see his bones and the blood going around his hands quite clearly. The light was so bright. When the blast eventually hit as well, uh, it was... Well, he found it indescribable, indescribable power. One thing I do know is that after during one of these tests, um, uh, one soldier uh, had panicked, and he had raised himself slightly above the 18, um, uh, 18 inches of dirt, and the result was he was thrown back um, many yards because he just got caught by the blast. Um, I think it was his head and uh, the thrust pushing him down, um, catapulting him along. He was very lucky to escape with relatively minor injuries, <clears throat> from what I'm told. Uh, after the uh, test, they um, stood up and turned around, did all their experiments, etc. They were ordered to do. Um, they noticed that what looked like five miles away, although maybe less, um, was completely gone or was burning so all the trees um, in the distance closer to the bomb were on fire 
and uh, when they got back to the base they were given medical inspections um, they all wore, wore badges which said that uh, um, if it changed colour they were had received a high dose of radiation thankfully none of these badges had changed colour and they were given they were decontaminated and when the bomber crew landed uh, uh, which had um, which dropped the bomb and then we turned to go through the mushroom cloud to carry out experiments um, that was washed down and decontaminated too um, when a bomb goes bomber goes through a nuclear cloud it doesn't get hot because the um, soldiers who were around even though they were ordered not to while the plane was being decontaminated they did go up and touch the plane um, so uh, nothing uh, the plane wasn't hot at all anyway um, my father had uh, no major health problems whatsoever at all um, he was perfectly healthy and in full vigour until 1985 when a whole load of um, things started to go wrong his basically his spine began to crumble away uh, and then it would repair itself and repair itself wrong Met much of um, his basic bones started to grow cartilage um, would weaken his fibroid gland completely packed him um, he's actually had part of his spine removed and it's been replaced by metal bolts uh, metal um, uh, rods which in turn have broken away from their moorings so basically it's got metal rods poking around inside him now um, to have them removed would probably kill him so they've uh, opted to um, keep them in uh, also uh, various number of problems he's having as well of his crash party crash parties tend to be between 15 and 25 men um, the last time about four years ago five years ago we knew that only five were still alive my father was one of them and uh, <clears throat> of the bomber crew that flew through the crowd the cloud um, the none of there were no survivors these are these were young men at the time and even now they're in there would only be in their 60s and 70s um, the uh, badges they found out that um, they were wearing didn't work so it wouldn't have told them if they'd had fatal radiation doses on that anyway um, and the British government has refused to acknowledge that any major health issues were caused by um, the nuclear tests uh, they actually said that my dad uh, had probably eaten a radiation poisoned fish when we lived in Kent near um, a nuclear power station down there and they said that probably that was the cause of what um, the apparent radiation problems my father was having uh, in war soldiers make sacrifices even in testing periods it's part of the soldiers lot my father accepts that um, um, but uh, the nuclear test veterans aren't asking for much they're just asking that uh, they're not even asking for compensation into of the millions of pounds which the Gulf War veterans are asking to be asking for but they are asking that their service be recognized and um, they be given the respect they feel they're due uh, as soldiers of the Cold War some of whom have died horrible deaths through radiation sickness um, they would like to ask the public even in spite of whatever side of disarmament campaign a person may be on at least to respect them as people and uh, and uh, have an understanding and um, and for the British government to say that that these soldiers have suffered um, and to be respected I think that's all any soldier who gives their all for the country would like so here's to the test veterans